So I am here today with my good friend Galnox, a nine-year-old who has beaten every Kingdom Hearts game, including the super boss, Yazora. How are you doing today, Galnox? I'm doing great. How about you, Kafi? I'm pretty awesome. After all, Sora is in Smash. <laughs> Before we start, I, uh, what's your favorite Kingdom Hearts game? Um, my favorite Kingdom Hearts game is Kingdom Hearts 2. And my top two favorite worlds in it is The World That Never Was and Lion King. Oh yes, I love the Pride Lands for Lion King and The World That Never Was. It's certainly fun fighting all of the Organization 13 members. Um, when you saw the Sora for Smash reveal trailer, how did you react? I reacted, I was just frozen with excitement. <laughs> That's fair. I, I was, I was screaming. I, I couldn't believe it. Well, I could believe it, but it was just, it was just mind blowing. It, it put to rest a lot of the, the doubts that the internet seemed to have about Disney, you know, mm -hmm. like, um, so one quick question before we jump into all of the dark road questions I'm going to ask you. Do you think Sora for Smash will be part of the Kingdom Hearts lore? Actually, I would say yes, but I don't think he would be right because they're whole really big different properties. That's fair. You think because they're kind of different properties and different IPs that they're not necessarily going to include it in the in the series? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. I'm, uh, I'm a little bit on the other end of the spectrum. I feel like now that he's been introduced, there's just so many video game possibilities. Like, I'm just thinking of, uh, I'm just spitballing, but I'm just thinking of a video game world that he goes to, like a Nintendo world. That would be really cool. And people were always talking about um, superhero worlds. So like him dealing with Iron Man or Captain America, because Disney owns those properties too. Yeah, true. So how would you, actually, which do you think is more likely? Do you think it's more likely him meeting superheroes like Iron Man, Captain America, or him having a game where he meets like Mario and the Inklings and Link? What, what, what do you think? I think Nintendo would be first, but it would be hard to choose because both are really good ideas. But if they do do both, um, I'm pretty sure Nintendo would do it first. Yeah, you think Nintendo would be first? I I'm really hoping for that uh, that Nintendo crossover. Now that we, oh, now that Sora's been introduced to Smash. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So let let us jump into Dark Road because there's a lot of questions with the finale just around the corner. Um, the first question is, who do you think Xehanort's surviving classmate is? Because we have Erd, Hermid, Breggy, Vor. And Balder. We have five classmates and we have four gravestones. So we know one of them survives. So what's your theory? Um, I think Vor survives. You think Vor survives? Interesting. I kind of think she's, she's the one that survives too, but what's what's your reasoning? Because um, in the 20th anniversary, there's Vor with Ericus and Xanor and... Yeah. She would whisk them the entire time, basically. Yeah, it... The way I look at it is they, they showed her prominently. Like, they featured her a lot in the 20th anniversary trailers. You're right. I didn't I didn't really notice that until you pointed it out. But um, they definitely show Vor with Ericus and Xehanort a lot. So I can see her being the um, the surviving classmate. Like, with the final... The, the person who's not a grave. Um... I'm almost wondering if maybe they're trying to trick us by showing her in the cutscenes. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, maybe maybe they're just trying to lure us into a false sense of security and be like, oh wait, it's not Vor. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, but um, I think I think you got a good theory there. Um, I think Vor survives, and it would make it would make the most amount of sense that Vor is Kyrie's grandmother. I I just yeah, that's what you that's what you're thinking, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, if it's not Vor, I could also see it being Erd or Baldur's sister. But at the same time, I think Vor's got the right uh, the right style. She's got the hair color. It just... Yeah, she fits. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So, 
One more question about Dark Bro. Actually, I got a few more. What do you think happened to the seven missing upperclassmen, which started the whole story? I think that maybe only some of them survive and some of them don't. But at the same time, if some of them that don't, I think the willful darkness took them over. Ah, uh, yes. Um, that's, that's a very good point. Um, in my opinion, yes, they are either dead or the willful darkness has took them over. Um, it might even be some sort of combination of the two. Uh, some of them may unfortunately have met their demise, and then some of them may be taken over by the, like, seven deadly sins that are the, the willful darknesses. Because we already know the ones in the Queen of Hearts. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, I personally like to think that Master Yen Sid is one of the missing upperclassmen. Yeah, that seems right, because it says that he's walked alongside Xehanort and Ericus. Yeah, he does have that specific line that he, he mentioned he walked alongside them in the past, and he talks about how, like, they knew stuff about, like, ancient Keyblade wielders in the past, so it's just like, we need to know more about Master Yen Sid, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, which, uh, which kind of brings me to, um my final point because i actually think there's a strong possibility that the master of masters is either sora in some way shape or form or master yen sid but i'm curious who do you think the master of masters is or at least what do you think is the name that he tells to young xehanort when they're having the conversation at the end of remind i think that the master of masters name or who he is is a character from Kingdom Hearts we all know if you've played the game and it's a character who we haven't had a lot to learn about. I think that's Demix. Ooh, Demix. Because De I think Demix is the master of masters because we don't well, we barely know anything about him. Yeah, that's that's a good point. We totally we totally don't know anything about Demix. I mean, for the longest time, it was um, Elrena, Lorium, Luxord, and Demix. We didn't know anything about, but now we know about the first three. And, well, even though we know a tiny bit about Luxord, we know he's from Quadratum, Unreality, and all that mm -hmm. stuff. But Demix, we never really... We don't know anything about him. We don't even know his his true name. Yeah. That's, that's pretty crazy. Like, because you can... Out of four words... It could be hard and it could be easy. Like, take Axel, for example. Lee, it could be other names that you can make up. But for D, E, M, and Y, it's pretty hard to make up a name. Yeah, that's that's a great point. Like, what would his, like, Medi or... Mm. MD? <laughs> yeah, like, it's, it's really hard to come up with a name if you drop the X on that. Mm-hmm. Um... So, I'm actually really happy that Kingdom Hearts Dark Road wasn't cancelled, because there were a lot of people who were worried when they delayed it that it was going to be cancelled. I'm actually thrilled that they're going to show it to us this winter. I am too. So, we answered a bunch of questions about Dark Road. Um, are there any other questions you have uh, before we go, Galnox? Um, it's one that I told you a while ago that we haven't really talked about. And it was that we, well, I found out that the gazing eye was in Dark Riku's Keyblade while I was playing Chain of Memories. And it's in a whole bunch of others, like Xehanort's, and then it's like in Vanitas's, yeah, and Terra. And, yeah, and it's in Taya, Terra's Chaos Ripper. So, oh, there's just so many, wow, like... It really puts into perspective, like, how the Gazing Eye and the Master of Masters has been watching people, like, all along, if it's mm -hmm. in so many different Keyblades. I, um, I wish I had an answer for you, actually, because mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's a great question. I, like, we know how it's in some of them, especially the no-name Keyblade that he passed down, you know, to Lushu and his apprentices, but we don't really know how the Gazing Eye got to be in Riku's Keyblade, in all of them, like... Mm -hmm. It's it's it was watching him the whole time it seemed. So that's that's pretty interesting. 
Well, it's always great being here talking Kingdom Hearts with you, Galnox. Happy to be here, too. Awesome. And now that Sora's in Smash, I'm sure there will be plenty more for us to discuss. Yep. So, I hope you enjoyed our chat. If you did, make sure to hit like and subscribe. But otherwise, have yourself a fantastic day. Sora's in Smash, people. May your heart be your guiding key. And happy gaming.